Hallelujah. With his mighty excellence, all that he has done for his nation, his people, Yisrael, what for a great privilege that he grants unto us. We shall be called his Bokhir, that we are the elect according to his election. He has chosen us. Not any of us had a resume that would impress him or intrigue him. It was by his election that he has elected a nation to stand for his sadiq, his character. And we walk in the same characteristics or having the same characteristics as Yoshua Hamashiach. And what a great blessing and a privilege just to be able to stand in the allness or the awe of his presence with two or three gathered in the assembly together. There shall he also be in the midst. And so I come to esteem to lift up his mighty name with no strength of my own. He has granted me the measure of strength life today that we may assemble in the bed of Almighty God. And I can't see a thing here either. I don't know why. Yeah, what's the duck, please? They're in the brown case. I can't see a thing when it comes to my focus. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, as the old song would say, that he has made me yafash. He has made me free. Not in or under the bondage of darkness with whom the Son makes free. He is free indeed. And for that I do rejoice greatly, Yisrael. I'm glad to be alive. I don't know about you, but I'm happy that I am alive. There is nothing that opposes me during the process of the day or the night season that will cause me to become delirious. And I'm doubtful as to what Yah expressed unto his nation. And that he is not the one that has formed us and made us into a people by his election. He's in control, Yisrael. I don't care what the enemy does. I don't care how our minds oppose him. Yah is in control. And he has placed the adversary to administer, to administer, administer to his elect. When your own mind speaks to you, you know you're not doing the will of the Abba. When your own conscience is the dictate of what is right, you know it's not of Yah. And that's a fact, Israel. We must stand in his truth. I was saying to one the other day, uh, I was talking to Ach Zachentayonia, and of course he rebuked me soundly. And so you think I took his buke, rebuke lying down? You think I laid down when he reproved me? No, I took it standing up like a man and had to confess you're right. He said, you tend to the preaching. Let me tend to this. I said, I will not fight you, my friend. You're right. I have never negated the reproof of Yah because I know that those that he received, all his sons, the love he corrects. He sends the Ruach of Musa. It corrects us. Told that, my friend. It disciplines us. And it reproves us. And I don't fight against that. There's nothing more powerful than to have the Zachin, the elders among Yisrael. And when Yah would remove them, they would fall into every kind of vile, seductive wickedness than one could imagine. And so I did not take his correction laying down. I stood up to it because he was right. And what he said, hallelujah. You reprove a wise man, he becomes wiser. 
You reprove a fool, one that is evil, and a fool is one that despises the chukmah, the wisdom of one's experience with Yah. That's what wisdom is. It is an experience. I'm wiser than you, son. I've lived your age, and now I'm living my age. So I'm wiser than you. And so my experience with life, uh, it speaks with great volume. That's what the hukmah, the wisdom of Yah is. It is a, an experience that we have in Torah. In Torah. And it causes us to speak. And when we speak, we don't speak like other men. Our verbiage is precise. It is pronounced. It produces life, the healing power of Yah. It gives us direction. Not us philosophizing, being philosophical. We can sit and talk all day on things that are irrelevant. There is a tremendous, uh, tremendous barringer in the life of Yisrael. I want to point that out tonight. We must awaken Yisrael. And when one has the kutz or the awe, when one is awakened, it's one thing that the awakening brings. It brings uh, a strength, an assurance, a transformation to the mind of Yisrael. And you will know there is a sure sign that one is awakened. When one has been aroused, when one has uh, been kutz, they have been aroused. You will know that. And the Torah is clear as uh, to who has been awakened. We shall not sleep and slumber in this hour that we are in. The Torah is precise as to identify, and you will know through the wisdom of Yah, those that uh, have awakened. I want to direct your attention to that, all right? It says here in the book of Mishli, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Mishli, Proverbs chapter 6, and verse 20, I want to begin reading it. This is a profound exhortation or encouragement for us as a nation, a people, Yisrael, that we should uh, halak, halak, to walk, to strive, uh, to be intimate uh, in striving in the mitzvah, the instructions uh, of Yah's truth. We must strive to do that, Yisra'ya. And the only way we're going to do that, we must have the wisdom. We must have, uh, the, what are the seven? Ru'achim of Yah, the wisdom of Yah. That is the Ru'achim, one of the seven of the Ru'achim of Yah. This is the Ru'ach, the wisdom. And so the profoundness of his wisdom uh, utters unto us in this hour. Yah identifies us as uh, my son, my being. My little one, uh, Proverbs 6.20, he tells him to nasa, to shema, to guard. When something that you guard, you set a defensive parameter around it. You do not allow anything just to penetrate uh, the vortex or the core of your mind, Yisraya. So he tells us to nasa, he said, guard, make sure that you watch over, make sure you protect. He says, your avat mitzvah, your father's command. We must guard that. We must nasa, we must guard the commandments of God. We must watch over, not something written on the wall here. We're talking about what he has written, he has hatab. He has inscribed in the mind of Yisraya. We got so much folly and so much frivolity. Jocularity, our talk is not of substance. We love to hear ourselves talk. That's who Yisraya is. That's why we're always questioning Yah. 
He said, I want you to Nassar to guard the commandments uh, of your Avat, your Abba. And then he tells us not to notash, do not forsake them. Do not abandon them, Yisraya. Do not reject. When one notash, you know, it's one thing to the pure, all things are pure. I don't give a, I don't care if you're not even operating in that. It's wise to hear wisdom. And we are a nation that will say, no, not I. No, that's not me. I will do like the publican. Well, am I? Yeah, I'm a wretched thing. See, that is the mind of the pharisaic order. This is not for me. And when a man is wise, to him all things are pure. And when we are defiled and we don't believe that Yah ordained and established, uh, then there's nothing pure to us. Yeah. Tell you the story that I recall a man said to me uh, that I was lusting for these women. I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not uh, denouncing them as being women, but I, if I wanted a woman, I could do better than that in the sense uh, of her ability, the mobility of those uh, I didn't find him. I said, Yah, Todan, I will guard my heart. Although I know I wasn't lusting for them. It's just the truth, but I didn't reject that. We reject. I will. We reject anything that we perceive uh, that is offensive to us because uh, we think very highly of ourselves. No, not me. Everyone else, uh, but not me. Uh, and that's the way we are. So we must guard, we must nasa, we must guard it with integrity. It must be of great value. Anything is of value, you guard it. Who? These are the mitzvah of our Abba. What are the mitzvah? The instructions of wisdom that produce life and strength, longevity, the health of you. That is what this mitzvah produced for us. He said, and do not not touch, do not reject them. He says, uh, not the Torah, the guidance of your ima. Don't reject that Torah of life, the Torah of the wisdom, uh, the Torah of the Ruach that mothers you. Uh, that's what an uh, ima does. She mothers us, and that's what the Torah does. Uh, it births in us, it brings life. Uh, so Yah said, don't reject that, nor even the Torah of your Imam. He says, I want you to do this. I want you to, Kasha, I want you to bind them. To bind them, we're buying them. I want it to be knitted in the process of your life. That it produce this robust nature and this love affair for Yah. We really don't have that great love affair for Yah. We don't have that robust love for Almighty Yah. We may say we do. And we are quick to esteem us and to look upon us uh, as having such great attributes that everyone should admire and seek after. He said, I want you to kasha, to bind them. That they become robust to invigorate you. Uh, to cause life to to, to flow like living water, Yisraya. And in the process of that, allow it to become the intricate pattern of your life and the way you walk and your reaction, your interaction with Yisraya. Hear this. He said, I want you to do that continuously upon your love, your laba, your mind. I want you to do that, to bind them. And when something has been interwoven into your psyche, you can't rid it yourself of it. It's almost like an individual that has a, a certain process that they know without even thinking on it. They can do the job, they can flow in the processes without even thinking on it, Yisraya. Then it become a woven pattern of your life. That's what it should be, Yisraya. He says, and tie them around your neck. Allow them not a gold medallion, or what they call the star of David, David. He said, I want you to cause them to be bound. 
to tie them, to not allow it to be loose from your rush, from the summit of the high place of Almighty Yahweh. And you place it in the centrality of everything you do, all of your actions uh, according to the Torah of Almighty Yah. That's the way it should be, Yisrael. But he gives us great insight here in the next verse. He says, when you go, when you go, when you enter into the presence of men, when you enter into the gates of the way of Yah, when you go, he says, uh, he says, it shall naha. It shall lead you, Yisrael. Not only does it lead us, but it is the power to govern us. It governs us. It governs everything uh, about us. He said, it shall uh, naha. It shall lead you. It shall govern you. Uh, it shall guide you. It shall speak to you. Uh, this is what the wisdom uh, of Yah's Torah does. That's what it does. Not this juvenile philosophizing. We can't remember one verse. We can't remember this. How can you speak with any kind of elegancy when it comes to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? He said, and it shall guide you. It shall govern you. He says, when you are sleeping, you tell me the wisdom of the Torah guides us in our sleep. But this is the catalyst here. You will know when one has been awakened, when there is kutz, when the awe of Yah, when the kahats, when one is aroused, their mind, you see it in the expression of their poor name, you see it in their mind, in their conscience, it is the truth. We see death among Israel, we see uh, this disgruntledness of ignorance, of one's own philosophizing and one philosophy. He says, when you sleep, it shall shana, it shall guard you, it shall keep you, it shall preserve you. He says, and when you are awakened, when you are kutsa, when you are roused, when you spring forth, when you come up out of, uh, of that deep death of sleep, it says, it shall siach. It shall talk. It shall talk. It shall talk, it shall uh, see. Uh, it shall cause you to meditate upon it. It shall cause you to laha, to study. It shall cause your mind to resonate uh, the patterns of that great life uh, that it produced. When a man is awakened, when he's awakened out of his slumber and his darkness, his mind, a thinking man, you can tell what he's thinking. A wise man on his poor name, you can tell the beauty of his wisdom, Yisrael. And when he has kutz, he has sprung forth. He has risen up from the very, uh, from the de- very depth of the captivity of darkness. He says that the Torah, the wisdom of the Torah, shall speak. It shall see ach. It shall cause him to meditate. You shall see the life in that man. You shall see the beauty of that woman. I see death among the nation of Yisrael. Not only is that siach that he meditates, but it calls you to sing. And it calls you to praise her. That's what C-S-E-E-A-K-H-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-A-C-
And one was standing there with me. Uh, and she says to me, Ray, uh, I need someone to teach me this. See, the spirit of one like that, uh, that, that is a blessed assurance. I had a man to write me and say to me, uh, well, are you going to keep it this way or that way, the, the Pesach of Yah? Now, the man has only began to keep Pesach two years ago. Uh, isn't that amazing? Uh, I had a man to call me today. Uh, in his temperament, he rose up. What do you have against the pagans? Uh, well, when I finished with him, he hung up. No, no, I did not take his correction laying down. I said, you called the right man. Well, you got this up on your site. You speaking against Eastern Christmas. I say, damn, Easter, damn Christmas. Damn your Jesus, too. He said, damn Judaism, because I guess he thought I was a phony Jew, as they are. I said, and damn Judaism, too. It threw him for a loss. He didn't honor his mind. And so he could not contend with me verbally. I said, are you an educated man? Are you not? Oh, sure I am. I got a degree. Ah, and that's when I tried to take him apart. And I did. So he could not stand against this force of truth. So I hear something click. I said, you coward. You called me, you messed up. You can arouse them out there, but you don't arouse me like that. I'm a warrior. Because I have a cause that is greater than my cause. When one has awakened, when one has the earl, the hoots of Yah, they have awakened, they have arisen from their slumber and their sleep. And when a man has this life of this wisdom of Yah, you see the liveliness upon this man. In all of his activities, on the halt, you see that. So are we awakened, awakened, O Yisrael, Quds? Arise, arise in the wisdom of the Torah of, the Yah, of Yah. In the midst of your sleep, when you arise, it shall see. Ach. It shall. That's what talks to Yisrael. And you will know it's talking to you because you're not walking around moody as hell and grumpy as hell. It calls you to sing with the delight of the wisdom of the Torah. You don't need words to sing. You don't have to have words to sing. You sing from the wisdom of the Torah. You sing to what it speaks to you. That's what the siach is. Your mind is meditating upon the beauty of Yah and not following, not your philosophizing, your philosophical approach. That's why we have not moved beyond the paradox of our sins and our wicked ways. Because we don't know what this book says. And that's a fact. You can pretend all you want to. We don't understand the wisdom of this book, Yisra'ya. Now, now I, I want to read this, even his father. This is what David says. Uh, Turn quickly to Tehillim. I'm going to finish on time tonight. Quickly to the book or the writings of the psalmist Tehillim. This is a profound tefillah, a prayer, a palah, an interceding unto Yah, as Davi prays to the above. He says, Tehillim 17, verse 15, he says, As for me, Yah, as for me in my house, we're going to serve Yah as a He said, As for me, Yah. He said, I will, I will hazach, I will observe. When you observe something, the word hazach means that you perceive the wisdom of that matter by watching. Not just looking. You don't perceive the wisdom. He said, I will observe. I will hazach. I, I will perceive, I will understand by a, a, an attentiveness to watch. When we don't watch ourselves, we cannot see what we're doing. When you're sweeping around my door, and you're not sweeping around your door. I know that's right, Amen. You know I know that's right. I will hazak. I will observe this what he says. He said, I will observe what? Your pronim. He said, I will observe the face of Yah. Look up our redemption draw at night. Set our affection on the things that are in the Shemayim above and not on the things that are earthly. Well, I've got to have this. Don't let that distort you. Oh, I need a wife. Don't let that distort you, my ark. Uh, 
You press on in Yas Torah. He will withhold no tough thing from the man or the woman that walks up right. He will not. He said, I want to behold, I want to see uh, the very poor name. I want to hazah, I want to hazah, I want to observe the face uh, of Yah. What's more precious uh, than the face of Almighty Yah? How do we see that? Well, when a man is awakened, uh, and then he siaka, when the Torah siaka, you see it in the man's face. Uh, you see a generation, they look crazy today. You see why older men that should be wise, they look nutty today. You see the bath of Tizayan, they look crazy today. When the Torah speaks to us, it calls our face to sing. You don't have to sing. When you talk about how tough you are with people, I cause people, when I see people, it's one thing that I will go out of my way to that one, those that they have been perceived by the masses as the rejects and ones that have no beauty. I found them and people of that nature that have the greatest of beauty. And those that I not confront, but we're in the same path. I go out of my way to make sure. It's the arrogant ones. I don't, don't mess with me. Go on your way, man. Go on, woman. He says, I will observe. I will observe. I will hazard. I, I, I will see your face, yeah, that I will see your face by the experience of the Torah as the Torah speaks to me. He says, I will, uh, I will observe your panim, your face, your complete, completeness. Uh, he says, I will see it in sadiq, in the righteousness of your character, in the laws of the Torah of your righteousness. Look at what this man says here. I like this part here. He says, I shall be... So I shall be satisfied. You understand what satisfaction is? Satisfaction when one exceeds to the point whereby they have excess. That's what it is. I was looking today in the papers and I said, I don't need that. And I thought about your issue. I said that coconut cake. And my mouth started drooling. I said, I can't eat it now. I'm not going to have her to do that for me now. But when I saw that, I'm telling you, my mouth started drooling. I could literally taste that coconut at the bottom of that pain, that rich sauce. I could taste it. Oh, taste the beauty and the Fragrance of all my and see that you're sure you're sweet. Yeah. Not savior, but sweet. I think it's Zatash. I got to, uh, I'm lost on that one, but that's all right. I'm close enough. Listen to this Psalm 17 15. As for me, I will observe your ponim uh, in Sadiq. He said, I shall be satisfied, I will have excess. Feed me until I want no more, Yah. He said, I will have excess when I have kutz, when I have awakened. When a man is awakened, he has an abundance. He said, when I've awakened out of the darkness of my own sin and my wicked ways, uh, my defiance, uh, when I've awakened, uh, when I behold the ponim uh, of all Maria uh, in the power of his uh, under, the, uh, under the instructions of Torah, he says uh, that, that I shall be uh, satisfied. I shall have access. I shall have more. When, David, when I awaken, when? He said, like your team, team, Muna in your similitude, he said, in your likeness, in your likeness. When a man is awakened, he awakened in the likeness of Yoshua Hamashiach. We have the spirit of bulls of the shore, of an evil thing. You're going down to the doctors of hell, whether you believe that or not. When I have awakened in your likeness. Shaul says this unto the gathering of the elect of Felicia. 
He said, let, bestow, allow the same Laba, the same mind that was in Yoshua HaMashiach that must be in us Yisraya. And he came after the order of the throne of David. When I awaken, when we see the face of Yah, when we stop dispelling Yisraya, his nation, his people, when we can see the beauty as the song in the days that we were singing, uh, all of your sure you're going to see is the one that is in me or the power of that living truth. We didn't understand what we were singing. We didn't know the legitimacy of that. We were aroused and eager. We wanted to listen to every preacher that came to town uh, that could give us insight and a little knowledge uh, uh, and that would correct us. We would drive here and there and to listen and sit in the meetings. We weren't arrogant. We were not hubris. And that's the truth. The men that will never get in where we are because they don't see their own state of mind. They don't see their own condition because they have, and they have created this false illusion of themselves what they really think they are. You will never know who you are until your hands are put to the plow and among Yisraya. They see what you got. You find out what you're all about. You can talk all you want to and I said it doesn't mean a damn thing. It's of no substance. That's why he's going to judge every man by every idle word that proceeds out of the mouth. That's why we have to be careful. That's why we have to be quick to hear. Quick to hear and slow to speak. I always warn people, no, 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 stop. No. I've been around too long. I've been around for a long time. And I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. When I awaken in the likeness of Almighty Yah, when we awaken, Yisrael Yah, when we awaken out of this drunkenness of stupor of sin, we will have the Timunah. We will be in the same similitude or the similarity of the same mind as Yahshua HaMashiach. We awaken out of the drunkenness of our own nature and our own flesh. We must awaken. There must be an arousing in the depths of our bosom, Yisrael. We must be aroused. How we arouse when we hear the when we hear the living power of the Torah. And when the Torah, when the living truth of the Torah comes, it enters our bosom like a fire. It is going to find something there. Every time we assemble, we gotta, we bring something. I never did like it when he found in Hartsville when he would speak to me, and there was no reproof to correct me. I, I hated those messages. And he was set there, and he would touch on me all the time. Ah, don't talk about no blessings. I don't want to hear that. And tell me my nature. And then when he would finish, I would love him even the more. I'll leave the assembly sometime broke. So give everything. That's the truth. Don't talk to me that way. Tell me the truth, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. That is a fact. Hallelujah. The reason we don't inquire of Yah and pray Yah, Zachor, help me. Arah. Send me your special help because uh, we're not a people whereby our conscience, our minds, do meditate in the Torah. We don't lachach. We don't do what Shaul told Timothea. A lot of people misconstrue that, what he said, study. He used the word lachach. Meditate, ponder, consider. Study to show yourself approved unto Yah. That when you speak to these zakhin, the elders of Yisra'ya, they will know you're a sound young man. That they will not despise your youthful nature and your immaturity in the ways of Yah. Because you have Zachin Obadah, you have Zachin Shimri, you have Zachin Matiti Yah, you have mighty men that are Torah wise. And the wisdom of the Torah is a light, the legitimacy of that knowledge. They don't understand the dynamics of this Hamashiach. And so you don't reprove them because they don't understand that before the congregation. Uh, you, and you let someone come to you and, and speak to you against the zakin, and you're going to rebuke him? He said, don't let them. Whatever. I study, show you, said, prudent unto the Lord God. 
You silly thing. You haven't even read the contextual order of what and the letter that he wrote. You haven't really read it. If you needed to be approved that's all he needed, then your shoes certainly would not have given gifts unto men. He didn't give them unto faggot. He didn't give them unto women. He gave them unto men. Before he ascended to above high to regain his rightful place by the right hand of Almighty Yahweh, he descended into the earth and he gave, men, he gave gifts unto men. And this wicked generation has disdain for that. They despise that. Nobody tell me nothing. You're a liar. Go to that job, they tell you. And you're fearful too. Talk to me. You got a 900 dollars a month house payment. Your babies and you know that wife is at work and that 300 she brings in a week is needed. And when the boss man get huffy with you, you're not going to say anything. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Let's get real. I want to show you a profound prayer that we need to pray as a nation, a people. David prays here in Tehillim 108 verse 1. I want to show you some things quickly. He cries unto the Abba. He says, oh, yeah, oh, Almighty oh, Yahweh, oh, Abba. He cries, Psalms 108 verse 1. He says, I want you to know one thing above all things. He says that my life is skun. It is fixed. It is established. It is steadfast. Are we truly steadfast and fixed? Has our heart individually and our levim, our hearts collectively, have they, has it been fixed? Khun is established in truth, is established in the Torah of delight. And we sing not because we're happy, we sing because of truth. Someone called me the other day, and the person that was talking to me, the person said, can you sing? And of course, I just start singing. I just start singing. Sure I did. Whoa, oh, we're going to shout in the name of Yoshua. Come on. This is how the Torah speaks to me constantly. Oh, there are cats on the streets that, I found love on a two-way street. I found love. I lost it on a lonely highway. Come on, that wine head standing around the bear all day long, and they can croon it out. And you tell me that I can't sing? You tell me those that have no ruach of y'all can do it? Something is sick in our wicked minds. You twist it. The great Ahava he has poured upon me? No, sir. Dawid intercedes. He says, oh, yeah. He says, my love is firmly established. It is kum. Is it established? I'm determined. I have the security of Torah. He says, when a man's heart is firmly established, he says, I will hear. I will sing. Oh, I will sing of the blessings of Yan Yoshua. I will sing of the... Your heart is not fixed. You will know what a man's heart is fixed. He said, I will sing. I will share. I know we take that lightly. But what he tells us to honor our Iman our Abad, that our days should be long upon the land, Almighty Yah gives us, is that a lie? No, it's not a lie. Neither is this a lie. My heart is fixed. My love is kun. It is established by the wisdom of the Torah. That's why I, when I'm awakened, I sing, I meditate, I ponder. Now this word is to show us what's in us. It is to fart us out. You're not going to sit in the presence of your filth as we are and think we can bring an offering that is acceptable. Huh? He says, my love is fixed. He says, I will sing. And I will give hallelujah. I will give praises. Hallelujah. 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 This is what he said. I will give hallelujah. He says, even, even 
with my full honor or supply, my full chabod, uh, of the great abundance you have given me, of the great excellence you have showered upon me. He says, and I will praise you, O Yah, among the people, and I will sing praises among the nations. Why? Because his heart is fixed. No, I've, hold up. Verse 2, that's I said something here is wrong now. Verse 2 is my catalyst here. He says, Awake on! The sorcery of our lips. He says, Awake, O sorcery and harp. Awake on. Awake on. Sing the melodies unto Yah. He says, I myself will awaken. He says, I'm going to do it early. I get up before the birds get up, as Granny would say, and the old one would say, I get up before the birds get up. They will get up before the rooster got up. We need to awaken. When a man is awakened, he will sing unto Yah. He will sing. He doesn't even have to exert verbiage. His face will sing. You have gone places and people say, oh, you look so beautiful today. You look so happy this morning. You tell me if one looks happy, you can't tell her. And if one looks like a damn nutcase, you can't tell her. Something is wrong with you. Look at your face, woman. Man, look at your face. Oh, you look so pleasant this morning. You've never heard people say that? What's wrong with you this morning? You look all grumpy. See, smile on me. We have no power of discernment because we're ignorant. He said, I will do it with all of my cabo my full supply. Don't you know that Yah gave you the supply of breath this, tonight, this morning? And then we negate to praise him to Hallel. Something is wrong with us. Oh, you don't escape this, you that are watching. You that will hear this. I don't mind to call me my... Ach, Yusipia. He says to me, Re'ach. It's amazing how juvenile we are as a people. Even the world will tell you that LeBron James is the best ball player. They will tell you that when Kobe in his day, he, nobody touched him. They will tell you who's the best in everything. And yet what a messenger, a man that is simple. We don't bestow those kind of accolades on him. And so when people say things to him, he's trying to esteem himself. It's so stupid. But he calls me. He was a part of this large group. I'd known the group he was a part. He said, man, when I heard you, that was a message you taught. Isn't that amazing? Because man called me. I talked with this aunt the other day. He said, this brother, he just loves to hear Zachin Yarabi preach. Am I offended at that? We preach the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he just get excited when Zachin Yarabi so this man said, I listened to that message. He said, I've been around, he's in his 60s for a long time. He said, I've never heard a man exalt and esteem the word and the nurturing you do. He said, when I listened to that, all I could do was lay on the bed and see how wicked, how filthy, how demonic my mind was. And I thought I was right. And the message you preached on the desolation that maketh abomination, I was just overtaken. So we don't talk like that. Because we see ourselves. That doesn't mean a damn thing to me. What? what, what, what to promote myself among a handful and a few people? That's so silly. That is so immature. That is just flat out dumbfounded. But his heart was enriched and blessed. One called yesterday and said, Re'ach, my father that lives in Kentucky, I don't even know who the man is. He told me to listen to this man. He was calling from Orlando, Florida. My father listened to you all the time. Well, the father, I don't even know the father. You understand? I give it to you raw and truth.
I understand what people say when they say I haven't heard it like this because it is real and it's genuine and they judge the character of the one that speaks. And that's a fact. That's a fact. It doesn't have nothing to do with me. It has all to do with him, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Awaken all sorcery and the harp. I myself will awaken early. Sha'a, I will get up. Do not Shalomo says that when I am quits, when I'm awakened, that the Torah will talk, siach, talk to me, make me sing, make me dance, and make me shout. We're not awakened. That's why we don't put on the armor of Yah. We don't put on the beauty of Yoshua HaMashiach. When something gets beauty, even a child can see it. When there's a beauty about any man, any woman, even a child can see it. When there's something filthy about one, even children can see that. That's why it must be a constant purge again, working on ourselves. I don't negate to do that. I'm constantly pruning me and impelling the lust of my spirit and my flesh. You must constantly do that. And that's a fact. You think you're not, you're going to get by wall unto you, my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awaken. I will come. I will arise. When we're awakened, they become powerful and strong. We are fragile. We are fragile people. And when one awakens in the truth, when one kum, they are powerful. They have the innate ability of Yah in Yahshua Hamashiach's testimony. And that's a fact, Yisrael. When they become established in the Torah, there's an affirmation and a confirmation in their own heart. They're fixed. And nothing... You see it in their, in their visage. He said, when I, when I observe your face, Yah. He observed the face of Yah when Moshe did it, cause uh, his face to shine with the ma'o of Yah. When a man observed the face of Almighty Yah, you will see the light of that enlightenment. Uh, he's so consumed in his own wickedness uh, and his own self-righteousness. Uh, he doesn't produce no fruit at all. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm talking to everyone, my zakhin. Give up people don't like me, so what? They didn't love Yahshua. Even the twelve he picked. When he went down to Shu'ol, to the grave, they went about their business. But he had to come and restore them. I'm so glad of that. He sends his word today to restore us and to heal us. That's what he does. Hallelujah. 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 Our vows must be precise as a zakhin. You know, Rabbi, uh, endeavor to confirm that in us. That's why words should be few, Yisra'ya. We need to learn how to be quiet. And hear. I show us a spectacular event. I want to show you something here in the book of Shoftim, in the book of Judges. Now you have to... Read some verses to understand this. When I give you one or two, uh, read and tie, take time to ponder it, to meditate. And Gideon, when the Melechites and the Amalekites, and when Gideon said, Yeah, if you're going to give us a victory, then, then let me put this fleece down and, and let it be wet in the morning, let it be dry. We always, our minds challenge the authenticity of Yah. That's why we look at each other and we don't see the, we don't see the strength of Yah's beauty in each other. We don't see the power of his election. One says to me the other day, well, you know, I, I, you know, I know how men, I don't trust no men. I say, well, uh, your own heart is de deceitful. It deceives you more than anything. I've been played in my life. I played no, knowing that I was going to be played because I played others. I've been played on and, and I've played on. A player knows when he's going to be played. I knew they were playing me, so what? No verbiage, you win some and you lose some. You're not going to win them all. But we win it all in Yahshua HaMashiach. And so y'all elected this man. 
to come against the insidious forces of hell. He said, first of all, you got too many. Take them down by the brooks. And the ones that are wanting and fearful when they drink, uh, he said, discard them. But the ones that get down like a dog, uh, yeah! those are the ones. We will never understand the power of yours to show out the victory uh, in your sure until we are awake. And look what happens here. It says in Judges chapter 7 verse 15. It says, when the messenger of the man of Yah that told Gideon the dream, and he knew then, he said, ah, boys, it was the dream that caused the, the kum, caused him to rise in the power of Yah. And it says in this verse, one verse, and it was so, when Gideon, Gideon heard, when he shemach, when he said in his heart he was going to be, he, when he heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, uh, that he began to sheha. When the Torah is revealed unto us by the, uh, by the mind of Yahshua, you will sheha. You will worship, Yah, you will sing. That's the purest uh, of all forms of worship. Uh, we come to the true state of that true sheha. We will need no man to preach to us. Uh, we don't know how to. When he heard the interpretation thereof, that he began to shaha, and he returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, awaken, get up. When one awakened, they arise in the strength of Yah. He says, Kum, arise in the strength, the might and the power of Yah. Why? Because Almighty Yahweh, he has not done, he has delivered to into your hands, the hosts of the medians. Talk to me. We arise, we awaken in the morning. The Torah will speak to our mind, not our stupidity of, our, of that deception of your own wicked hearts. Get up moody and crazy and nutty. I don't even know why I'm speaking like this, but we need it. There's nothing like getting up early in the morning for me. It's a medicine. It really is. You see the beauty of the darkness. I'm walking over there. I'm saying, what's bone? Your own shadow scaring you, boy. That's all it was. I said, you silly boy. I did. That's... I'm ready. Right Whoa. Oh, oh. That's your shadow, cat. That's all it was. I'm ready to attack my shadow, bruh. You are weak as ducks, water boy. Let's get on up out of here, man. Walk. Get busy. He said, Kum, arise, awaken in the strength, the power, the might of Yah, and overthrow that spirit. That force from hell that rises up to present an authority and a power in your mind, your emotions, your nutty look. The wisdom of Yah caused a man's ponim to shine. And he doesn't have has to be smiling like a chip nut. Or oh, what's that little the little Chipmunk. <laughs> I will, man. We must awaken. I got 15 minutes, and I'm going to close it on that time. There's more to this than I can teach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know be the prophets, the Navi'in, the messengers. And no be a prophet. The Torah tells us that he naba, he speaks by the utterance of wisdom, by the ruach chodash. Not that mess when I was growing up. Quote: Yea, say the Lord thy God, He is going to bless you with the 
brand new pair of brown shoes. They would never lay hands on me, really, because I wasn't buying that. I'll just stand back and look at them. I didn't buy it. I wasn't going to be a part of it. I didn't like it because I knew it was wrong. But it's the same thing as those that are the Yahweh's, Yahweh's assemblies. They have incorporated this religious Holy Spirit among them. They're no different. The women are worse off than what they call Christian girls. At least they will have some kind of decency. These women are not as fruitcakes. And the men are even worse than that. Hallelujah. And so when the Nobi he speaks, when the Nobi he speaks, he speaks by not just the wisdom of Torah, he speaks by the utterance of the Ruach. Yah is the breath or the wind of his speech, Yisra'ya. And so when he speaks, everything he does, it destroys everything, he tears down. And then he has the power of the same tongue, tongue to that Loshon to build. He builds us in the knowledge. They're building, sometimes you got to take them all the way out. You got to gut them down and say, let's destroy it. Start afresh. And we got to start afresh. Yeah. And that's just a fact, Yisra'ya. So he gives us, Yeshua gives us this great picture of the honor of Yah for his elect. We don't realize how much he cares for us, that he causes those individuals to abandon all things to make sure that we, we ascertain the most valuable thing. All my years as a young 22, 21 year old fool, I've allowed nothing, nothing to interfere with this walk in all of my ignorance. Not mama, not daddy, not brothers, not a sister, not aunts, no one. I've allowed it. The words were not an offense to me. They did not remove me from this course. And as I walked the course, I found out one thing above all things. Can I tell you? When I wake in the morning, I will find out one thing above all things. How ignorant I am. How immature I am. Oh, I know some of y'all think you're wise and strong. You don't have anything. So the Nobi speaks here in Yeshaya, Isaiah 6, verse 1. The word awaken or kum or kutz, they all have the same uh, root of the verb, either from the Hebraic language or what we call the Ugaritic language and some forms of that and what we call the Ethiopic or the Kushi, as Moshe married a Kushite. How about that? Hallelujah. So he says here, Yeshaya chapter 6 and verse 1, he tells us to arise. When we are awakened, the word kum, it has one definitive uh, as to the strong struck of that word. It is to rise powerfully, to stand up with power. In the days they would say, stand up and be a man. You ever heard that one? We tell you, stand up and be a man. Stand up and act like a man. Quit acting like a boy. That's why the old folks were saying, come by here. They were saying, arise in your power, yeah. Come, come. And so we were thinking they were saying to ya, come by here. But they were saying, come, K-O-O-M. It is to rise in your power. That's what the word is. Come by here, yeah. Come by here. Come by here, yeah. Come by here. Come by here. Kumbaya, ya, kumbaya, oh ya, kumbaya. So they were saying, arise, ya, arise in your power in this great bondage, in this great tyranny of my mind. Arise, ya, they were saying, arise powerfully, ya. Uh, you can search the Torah, you can see where David says to ya, awaken out of your sleep, ya. Awaken and attend to my palah, my cry. I need you, ya, when his enemies are pressed against him. We have not been taught the order of your truth right. Because we honor not the messengers of you. We don't honor that. That's no honor today. I'm not looking for no honor. But we don't honor what Yah, we don't see what Yah has put 
the world knows that they will say that. Where do they say LeBron James' talent come from? Talk to me. They will say what? Come on, where, where does the world say his talent comes from? I got you on the spot like Zachary Yaramia. I'll answer it for you. It's a God-given talent. God gave him the talent. Quote, God gave him the ability to bounce the ball and the duck and the thunder pump, pump, pump. That's what they say. You know I'm telling you the truth. Some of the vilest of holotry and horror. Oh, your voice is so beautiful. Well, you know, quote, well, God gave me this gift and I just love to sing cherry pie, cherry, cherry, cherry. You know it's the truth. Yoshua sure gave gifts unto this simply. I want to finish here. I got a few minutes. Yoshua 61, arise, and he tells us to my oh, to shine. For your light. Who is our light? Yoshua's our light. This is the prophecy of Yoshua. So he tells us to cool, awaken, arise. You know, isn't that morning when you wake up, boy, you're ready to go, you're energetic? And that morning you wake up, you don't feel like a dime. I know both of them. Let's go, preacher. Hey, baby, how you doing? Shalom. Talk to me, Yisrael. He says, arise and shine for your light. It is come, boo. It has hit an end. When the light of Yah comes into us and into in, it causes us to shine. When the light of the testament of Yahshua, it causes us to get up. We don't relegate ourselves to the same place that we've walked in, Yisra'ya. For your light is come. And the splendid of Yah has zarach. It has risen. It has caused the light to shine. It has come forth. There's nothing. How sweet is the sun when it arises. There's nothing like that. It's a beautiful thing. He says, uh, and the light of the splendid of Yah has risen upon you. It is the power of that testimony of Yahshua in our rush. It rises up against the forces of hell. It causes us to be awakened. And when we awaken, we will sing the Shiram, the songs. We will rejoice and praise Yah. We will allow Yahshua to speak to our mind, to live in Torah, Yisra'ah. And when He speaks to us, uh, uh, we're happy. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I, I am free. Oh, I am. Come on. Why, Yah? For behold, the whole shek, the darkness, shall cover the earth. It's our own wicked ways that we cover our sin. He said, for darkness, the whole shek, whereby the knowledge of the Torah, the wisdom of Torah shall be evasive unto men. It shall cover the whole erech. It shall cover the earth. He says, and gross darkness, the people. But Yah shall awaken. He shall come. He shall arise upon who? You, Yisrael. He shall arise upon you and his excellent, his splendor, his chabot, Yoshua, shall be seen upon you. When Yah, when we awaken in the rock of Yah, it's going to be seen upon you. When you wake up like a nut fruit cake head, it's going to be seen. And when you rise up with the ruach of Yah and Yahshua, that's going to be seen. When you rise up moody as a fruit cake, it's going to be seen. Hallelujah. You might as well love me. Even if I'm your enemy, you got to love me. You can't do me no harm. So you might as well love me. I tell you the truth. I bring the fullness of Yah's counsel. What? Well, this is all you need for tonight. I don't need to talk from Gilyana, Revelation 14. This is sufficient. Five minutes. I'm moving, Zakin. Quickly, quickly. Here in Second Peter. What? Yeshua just spoke. Is that not a sure word of prophecy yeah. of Naba? Is that not a sure word? Yeah. Uh, Kepha tells us in 2 Peter 1.19, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well if you take heed. If you take heed to what has been said 
in this pulpit what has been said. Take heed, you do well. He say, as to a light that shines in the dark place, just like what Yeshia prophesied, didn't he? Gross darkness. And yet his light shall shine upon Yisrael. What is his near? It is his Torah. The Torah is a lamp unto our pathway, our direct, the way we walk. Which way do we walk? We walk in the living power of Torah, Yisrael. He says, the light shine into the dark place until the day or the morning or the day dawn. And the day star or the living power of the Kuchab, my friend, Abner, the living, the star of light. Until the Kuchab, the star of Sadiq, arise, cause us to awaken. People go to Hollywood to look at the stars of Hollywood Boulevard. Walk on them, people puke on their names and everything. Spit on their names. But we are the amber of the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. We are the true Chochab of Yah. That's a fact, Yisrael. And when we are awakened, when we are awakened by the Torah talking to us and speaking to us, uh, you're going to see the light of that excellent of knowledge and wisdom. When you're grumpy and murmury as a wicked man or woman, you're going to see that as well. Yes. Hallelujah. We must awaken, Yisra'ya. <clears throat> we must awaken out of our sleep, as Shaul says. Hallelujah. Yes. Waken our, our, out of our sleep. We must arise from the dead. When sin is finished, it brings forth death, doesn't it? Yes. And that's why we're dead and we look dead and we act dead. Dead man can't sing. Dead man can't talk. I want to close with this. Precise I am. Hallelujah. I want to close with this. Zakin Yarabi can go whenever he wants to. Anytime. All right. But I'm sharp on the dime tonight. I got two minutes. I said to my shot, I don't feel like preaching tonight. And I did not. I don't feel like preaching. I have no, I, I don't orchestrate a message in my mind to get up here and talk. I just don't. I stand before you like a clown. I already know what I'm going to say. And that's just the truth. I may have scriptures here, but that doesn't mean nothing. I want to read from the book of Maccabees. I want you to hear this. Just hear it. From the fourth book of Maccabees. Hallelujah. This is a word to this tyrant. And Tychaeus, just like we are tyrants, nobody tell us nothing. We know everything. And so this is the word of the Kohan, the word of wisdom. Antiochus, the tyrant, that his knowledge was more excellent than Yah. Just like folks tell you, well, you, you know, you, you, you're healthy if you don't eat meat. You're a damn liar. Yah gave us meat to eat. This is a false lie from hell. It is a doctrine of darkness. We hear all, he gives us a dietary law. He just tells us not to be grammatizers and to eat like damn hogs. I look at these people who call themselves Royce and vegans and all. Hell, they don't look healthy to me. Skin, I'm like, I don't want to look like that. Give me, I'd rather eat some fat back and look. I'm not going to eat no fat back if you understand what I'm saying. G give me some, g give me some, some lamb chitlins. I don't want no hog chitlins or give me some cow chitlin. You cook them. Everything on that bad boy, you can cook. Everything but the blood. Listen to this. So we're just like Antiochus. We're tyrants in our own ways. Can no one tell us anything? And we think we are wise, but this is the, this is the message of wisdom that, uh, that was spoken unto this tyrant, this fool. It says this, hear this. Write it down. You can read it at a later time, but it's in the fourth book of Maccabees, Maccabeum, chapter 5. Just two verses I want to read, and I'm going to close. Verse 11 and verse 12. He says unto Antiochus, will you not awaken? Will you not kutz? Will you not, oh, will you not arise? Will you not kum? Will you not awaken from your foolish evil philosophy? 
And that's what we talk, philosophy. They don't quote scripture and direct you. Zakain Tayon, you are the same man that reproved me. He says, I'll tell you what, when you come to Riyadh, you better be ready to open the Bible, the scripture. I don't like the term Bible, but... Now, don't tell me that. That's not even in the book, man. That's not what the book says. It's not the truth. This is your own foolish philosophy uh, that you have elevated above Yah. And that's a damn wickedness. You have altered the Torah. So he tells this fool, uh, he says, uh, you will not awaken from your own foolish philosophy. He says, uh, dispel, eradicate, forsake your futile reasoning. You always reason. And they want to talk, they don't quote, they don't speak on the power of Torah, but they like to talk. And just talk, talk, talk. And there's nothing of element there because uh, if a man talks, uh, you will see the man's strength. If he has uh, the substance in his bosom, uh, you will see his strength in everything he does. When he walks, you will see it. When he works, you will see it. Listen, everything I do, you see my strength. I'll let no man outwork me. No man. I said to my Shimri, we were coming from our little office yesterday. I said, Shimri, I said, you see, Piana, we were cutting wood the other day, and I'm looking like, I know I'm bad to the bone. I can, I can roll with the chain. I can roll with it. After about the first hour, I'm rolling. I said, I said, Shim, I said, you know, I said, I go over to his pile, and my pile is three quarters of his pile. And, I, and when I look down, I say, ah, oh, that's it. I say, oh. I see he had the real road hog. She just went, and so my little thing, you know, she, you know, them big old logs like that we cut, and he just go. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, somebody right. I'm looking up there, I'm like, whoa. That's what it was. He had the real power. He had the real, he had the Cadillac, the Rolls Royce. I had the Volkswagen Special. It got me there. But it wasn't the real deal. And when a man has the real deal, you'll see it. And I saw in his power, in my power, great difference. And that's the truth. So we cannot allow our foolish philosophy to dispel your futile reasoning. And he says, a adopt, inherit a mind. He said, adopt a mind appropriate to your age. Quit acting like a boy. You adopt the mind that is appropriate to your age. He's talking to this fool, Antiochus. You adopt the mind that is appropriate to your age. And the only way you're going to do that, you must awaken. I'm, I'm Russian. He said, uh, 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 adopt the mind that is closer to your years. He said, philosophize, philosophizing uh, according. Uh, he said, you must speak according to the truth, according to the Torah. Not from your meagerly words of no substance. What a man is awakened, that's the way he speaks. He said, according to the Torah, of what is beneficial. You talk to the degree that you will see. If you eat a certain way, if you don't eat, I'll, uh, come on, I love fried chicken and, and fried fish and steak and fried potatoes. But I know I can't eat that way. Eat that way, it's gonna mess me up. So I adopted a pattern of eating that is beneficial to me. It may not be beneficial to you, see. So I don't tell you how I eat. So it's beneficial. So you must adopt a mind that is beneficial. What is if something is beneficial, you see growth, don't you? Oh, you're looking better, man. You what are you doing? There are results that are beneficial, uh. And look at this, he says in verse 12, and have compassion, have compassion on your old age. Be compassionate, be sensitive in your old age by honoring my humane advice. That you honor the advice of those that have wisdom to tell you that you're wrong and tell you you need to grow up 
and tell you you need to mature, you need to do that. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all in Yahshua's name. May he strengthen you all. May he bless you all in his mighty truth. Azakhain, we appreciate you that have joined us. Whether you like me or not, that's all right. Hallelujah. We appreciate all your kindness, your gifts, my friend Ak, Frank, and your Isha die, and they are in Nebo, West Virginia. Come on, my Zachin, he's going to come. We, we greet you all, all of your friends, your gifts, our uh, whole earth, uh, heart bells there in Florida. Told us so much for your kindness, Ak, Mikaya, Mikaya, La, and Sophonia. Ya Barak, Shalom. Awake, awake, put on your strength. Put on your beautiful garments, O Yerushalayim. So we must awake just as we have heard tonight. You know, you hear the world, they talk about the higher consciousness of mind, and they don't know what, they don't know what that is. They speak uh, words that are empty, but they talk about the higher power and a higher consciousness beyond that of the physical or the mental mind. Well, we must be of that mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's the only high, higher conscience, Yisra'ya. Not embellishing or relishing in the flesh, but awakening, as we heard so beautifully put tonight, Yisra'ya. That we not be asleep in our ruach, that we should not slumber, but that we should awaken our, our ears being sharp, our eyes being sharp and keen to what we well, to what Almighty Yahweh is saying and what he is doing in this hour, Yisrael. So let us not be blinded by what the world is doing, but let us be wise to what Yahweh is doing. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet tonight, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And awaken, hallelujah, unto the voice of Almighty Yahweh. Almighty Yahweh, we told you for this midweek scripture, cut vey, truth that you have given us, Abba Yahweh, that even those, Yahweh, that was running a little low, a little empty, Yahweh, you have recharged us, you have refilled us, Yahweh, that we may go forth this night strong. And as we awaken in the morning, Abba Yahweh, we should barack you and give you praise for giving us breath and another day, Abba Yahweh. We ask you to go with those that have come from near and far, those that are listening by via live stream, that you're Melikim, and we camp around about them, Abba Yahweh. And all things we do give you Toda, and we barak you, Abba Yahweh, for Yahshua HaMashiach. And all things we do pray, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shalom, Barak Ko Yisrael, hallelujah.